Are you looking to fill out your home automation system with some inexpensive sensors? Well, stay tuned and I'll show you how to set up the new Xiaomi Aquara sensors on your SmartThings Smart Hub. Even though Xiaomi sells a separate hub for their automation gear, you don't really need it if you've got a Samsung SmartThings hub. I'm gonna show you how to install the software to support these sensors and then how to pair them to your SmartThings hub. Let's take a look. I like to buy my Xiaomi products through the GearBest site. You can use the links in the video description to find each product that I will talk about today. But if you want to see all of them, just go to the GearBest site and search for Xiaomi Aquara. You will see a large list of items from the Aquara family. Not all of them are compatible with SmartThings. So the best thing to do is check the latest list of compatible items on the repo for this project. The next few slides here are just a comparison on the pricing between standard SmartThings sensors and the Xiaomi sensors. A few months ago, I noticed the SmartThings sensors were quite a bit more expensive than they are today. But as you can see, typically the Xiaomi sensors are 25-50% to 50 cheaper than comparable sensors from SmartThings. Now the first thing that you need to do is add the GitHub repo for the Xiaomi sensors to your IDE. Um, if you don't know how to access your IDE, you um, Google that. I mean, there's, there's tons of instructions on how to do that. Um, I've also included a link to the um, repo for the user that has the, the latest updated Xiaomi sensors um, device handlers. <clears throat> um, B Springer, uh, and I have a link to this in the description of the video, also on the blog post. So uh, if you actually read his uh, README file on here, he describes where he forked this uh, repository from and also how to add these into the IDE um, for device handlers. Also giving you an idea of how to, which devices are actually available on this particular set of IDEs or device handlers. And the, he also has a great uh, link here to the community post describing some issues and how to um, pair them when you run into trouble. Some of these devices can be a little bit difficult to get paired initially. So, so what you want to do is um, go ahead and copy his username here. Uh, go back to your device handlers. Click on settings. And once you're in this interface, you want to um, go ahead and click Add New Repository. You'll notice I already have the repository listed, but I'll go ahead and show you how to do it anyway. In here, you're going to want to paste in the username, and then under the name, uh, you type in Xiaomi, leave master as it is, hit save. This will go ahead and add this to your list of repos, and then refresh the page. So once that page refreshes, you can click on the Update from Repo button. And then find the, uh, the, the repo on the list here. So in this case, it's Xiaomi Master. Uh, click on that, and that's going to load in all of the available device handlers. And you'll be able to select on the right any of the new ones that you don't currently have installed. If you were already had these installed and there was an update available in GitHub, they will appear on the left-hand side over here. You can tick those boxes, click Publish, and click Execute Update. Um, if there's a new one that you don't currently have installed, um, you can just tick the box next to it. If you notice, there are quite a few here that are not listed because I already have them added. So they will not show up as available in the interface. So again, make sure you tick the box, click Publish, and Execute Update. That's going to go ahead and pull these down and publish them so they're ready to go in the SmartThings interface. Now along the left side here, you'll see all of the different Xiaomi device handlers that are available for you. Um, if you see any item that's in purple, that typically means it's ready to be updated. You can go through that procedure I showed you before, but as you can see before, all of these are currently up to date. So the next step is to go into your SmartThings app on your mobile device and start to pair your devices, which you can jump to if you'd like. But next I'm going to show you what each sensor does and then how to pair them. So now I'm going to show you how to pair the various sensors that I have here. As you can see, they're all fairly small, um, a lot smaller than I was originally anticipating when I first purchased them. So uh, on each of these devices, pairing them is actually quite simple. It's just not really explained very well. Once you have your SmartThings Hub in pairing mode, all you need to do is um, locate the button 
the pairing button on each of these devices. So, for example, on the motion sensor, it's actually here on the side. It's this small hole button right here. It's a recess button. So when you're ready to pair, all you have to do is get a paper clip or toothpick or if you can fit your fingernail in there. Press and hold it until you see it flash blue. And then once it finishes flashing blue, continue to press the button over and over again um, about every one to to half second or so until the motion sensor is recognized by the SmartThings hub. So I'll keep pressing this until it shows up in the hub as uh, a device. And there it is, now it's showing up as a device. Now I can rename it and go from there. Likewise, on the other sensors, they have buttons as well. So on the door window sensor, um, it has a small button on the bottom. You can tell this one's actually out of its um, mount because I have the other part of it stuck to the window in my son's playroom. So again, um, you have a button on the side and on the top you've got an LED. So on this one, again, you hold it down until you see the LED uh, start to flash blue and then continue to press the button until it shows up in SmartThings. The temperature sensor is exactly the same way. There's a button on the side and LED on the front. Uh, likewise, you just press and hold until the LED turns on and then continue to press until it shows up in SmartThings. The only one that really doesn't have a very easy to find button is the flood sensor. There's actually no button on there. Um, the top of this is actually made out of a soft material and it does act as the main button. So if you press and hold on the leak button or the leak icon here, uh, you'll see an LED start to flash, which actually my finger was covering, but you'll see right here there's an LED that will start to flash. Likewise, continue to press it until the um, sensor shows up in SmartThings. There you go. Now your sensors are set up in SmartThings. Hopefully now you can utilize them to power some of your automations and do some very interesting things. Come up with a great. If you come up with some great ideas, please feel free to add them in the comments below. Um, I'd love to hear what you come up with with these sensors. Um, I'll be posting some videos later on with some other automation ideas that I've got with these sensors.